happy Valentine's Day and welcome to week one of Fort Worth Fabric Studio So Long and it is called As Luck Would Have It and when you download your sheets which are available today you will have three. You will have this sheet here which tells you all the fabric and how to cut it. This sheet here which tells you the colors. Here's our little color chart. I always keep that handy and then the actual sheet that has the cutting on. Now for everybody that is just starting out, hasn't done this before, didn't buy the kit, but you want to follow along and use your own fabrics, I'm going to show you what you're looking for. A is your solid white and you're you're going to need one and three quarters yards. If you want two to round it up a quarter, that's fine. But the minimum or the, excuse me, the maximum you need is one and three quarters, which is what 1.75 means. The next one, which is a, they're calling it, uh, the fabric is actually wood green. And all this fabric is by Henry Glass, in case you want to know, except for the white. And then it's telling you the size you need to cut out your fabric is a 10 inch by the width of the fabric. Now, the width of the fabric, for those that get confused about width and length and all that, it is not the length meaning yardage. It's the part that already comes. So if you've bought fabric before, it comes anywhere between 35 and 36 with the fabric. It comes 45 to 46 with the fabric, unless you're buying the 108 inch fabric. As a matter of fact, I will measure my white and I'll tell you exactly what it is for this. Hold on. Okay, so now looking at our sheet, this is the one we're gonna follow first, which is our white fabric. It even says it right here. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut two and three quarters by two and three quarter inch square in order to, and it's going to be three rows. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut out a strip that's two and three quarters inch. And I'm going to cut out two strips to start out with, actually three because it looks like I've got more than that. I'm going to cut out three strips. I'm going to cut out how many I need. All you got to do is count these. So just count one, two, three, four until you get to the end. Same here. It looks like this is going to be a little bit bigger piece, but you can go ahead and use it if you would like. You don't have to set that aside. And then when you get down to here, the next thing you're going to do is a five inch rectangle. So it'll be two and three quarters by five inch. This tells you exactly what you got to cut. So you're going to end up cutting three or four out of this fabric. I'm going to guess four because what I normally do is when I get to the end of my fabric, if I can cut out another square, I go ahead and I do it. All right. So this could give me two more squares, which would give me another one of these. And then when you get done with that, you're going to have two inches by six and a half. And you're going to do two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight strips that are two inches. Now what I do first, I will cut these strips out, which is three of them, because I already know I need two and a three quarters. Actually, I'm gonna cut out. Okay, so here it says I need it again. I'm gonna cut out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna cut out seven strips to start with. I'm not gonna cut this one out. They're all gonna be two and three quarters, okay? Just the strips we're talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these out. Then I'm gonna cut all these out. And if I have extra to do this right here, then I will do it based on this last strip here. I'm not quite sure if you understand what I'm saying. It'll save me an entire strip. I will let you know if it works out the way I think it is. This is how I end up with a little bit more white fabric when I am finished. And you can always use white fabric, whether it is white on white or plain white. It doesn't make any difference. You can always use it in some other project. Okay. You don't have to always have the same exact white. You won't even notice it unless you get close to the quilt. All right. Just giving you a little tip there. So let's go ahead and we're going to start cutting. The first few strips we're going to cut is two and three quarters. That's it. Just that strip, the length of my fabric. Now, do you see the top of my fabric up there? Right here. See how that overlaps? You can see it right there. Up at the tip here. It's overlapping. That needs to be cut straight off so that I have an actual straight cut. So I go up to the edge of the part that's sticking out and I will line up my fabric 
I will show you here on the bottom all the way down here the bottom of the fabric right across Let me back up this lens a little bit here all the way across here so that it is straight before I do my first cut alrighty so I went ahead and I've got it my first strip cut now let me tell you real quick if you starch go ahead and iron and start your fabric before you start you want to do it to all of them not one of them use your favorite cutting tool if you're a scissors person use your scissors you can mark your fabric with a pencil then you can cut it whatever you normally do that's what you want to do if you have a favorite rotary cutter and it hasn't had the blade change in a while now would be the time that you want to change the blade because a sharp blade will make this so much easier and it will go a lot quicker because you will not get hung up on your fabric and if there is any kind of nick in your blade it will take you a couple of cuts to get through it now you know I've already changed out my blade because I already did that uh, a couple videos ago I try and always use well I don't even try I literally use the same rulers this is a creative grid this is a creative grid because when they are made they are made identical if I was to use and I will get it over here because I do have rulers that I first started out with but I've only got like one or two of them so this is my Omni grid ruler alrighty now it is the exact same size wait a minute is it no it's not I was trying to see if I had the exact same size as this but I don't think I do and no I do not okay I was gonna show you how they were different and I'm not sure that I can do it even with a sample let's see this is a four yeah I can't even show you let's see here and they're off by a hair all right, and I don't know if you can even see this, but let me give you an idea. All right, here's my creative grid. This is my four and a half. I put it up against this other, and can you see how it's off? I mean, I'm not quite sure you can. Maybe based on this line right here, it's off a, just a little bit. Well, if you add up that little bit throughout your quilt, it becomes a lot. I mean, you don't think about it because, you know, it's just a little bit right there. But as you keep going and, and moving along, it's changed the size totally. So that's why I always try to use the same kind. Now, these have the grips already on them. You don't have to add them to it. My other ones, I actually had to add some grips to the back. But let's go ahead and we're going to measure. And I always use, just from habit, I use the white circles. All righty. So that's why my ruler looks like it's upside down because here's your one two three four this one's going upward but i come over two and three quarters i take the three quarter and i lay it so i can actually see it on my fabric now that's going to make a difference okay so this is for all the new people who are just starting out wondering about cutting how to keep it straight so if you were to cut it once when it's on the line or I mean not where you can see it and then I'm gonna push it over a little bit cut it your like your next strip so that it's off and you don't see it now because it's it, you can see it on the cutting board but you can't see it on the fabric that is actually a little bit of which I'm not sure you can see it on this fabric I don't know if I could get a zoom in on it let's see here if I can to show you the difference see nope you cannot see it I was trying to show you the gap between this ruler and that ruler well those little amounts will add up and this is what creates the blocks that are not exact and then you always wonder yourself it's a four inch block why can't I cut two exact four inch blocks well this is the reason because if you're not consistent 
it will be off one end or the other, one side or the other. So that's what you're looking for. But like I said, now, and just choose what you want to do. You can have it right on the fabric, off the fabric. It doesn't make a difference. It's going to be your choice. I go right on it so that I can actually see it because to me, I can line it up better. Then I butt up my other ruler. I always put a weight on this one just because of the length. And then I move this one and then I will cut this strip. So that's what I want you guys to do. And now that my razor is, I mean, my blade has been changed. This is so nice for the cutting part. And there we go, just like that. No oops, hang ups or anything. Go ahead and let's cut all our strips out. Then I'm gonna cut that first section and I'm gonna show you what I have left over. And you'll understand it when I get that to that point, I'll explain it to you. It says to cut eight. I'm going to start by cutting seven and see if I need to cut that next one. I'm down to my last cut on the strip. And so I want to show you what I have left over and what I'm going to do. First off, I have my hand touching the mat as well as the ruler for stability. If you hold, in this case, my ruler is not too big, not too small. And if I hold my hand up here at the top part, pushing down on it, when I take my rotary cutter and go up, it will not move my fabric and shift it, which is what it normally does. So I line it across the bottom and then I line it up the side and I see the little black lines right here on the fabric. And then I hold it, make sure your fingers are safe and not over the edge here, and then cut it. Now, this is my last piece. I'm gonna open it up. And this is what I was talking about, the extra fabric. You can iron it if you want. I'm going to lay my ruler back on it, measure once more, and I'm gonna get one. Every other one that I've cut has been two pieces. Whoops, I just bumped that hole on there. And this is just the one. So this is what I have left over after my strip. I've cut it twice. This is why I came back to show you. So now I can put these two together. So one strip, as you can see, this was one strip. So I have two, four, six, seven. So seven times two, because remember there, it cuts two, which is 14. So you will literally get 15 out of your strip. After you've done two, you have now 30. And you're going to need exactly 30, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, 36. So I'll cut three more strips this size out of the next, I mean, three more of this size out of the next strip. And that'll give me my first set. And then this is what's discarded. Okay, and I'll leave it like that because those are the exact same amounts. I just want to come back and show that to you real quick. I put my design board out. This is my week two design board. I marked my fabric and I have a clip on it. I looked at my paper right here. And I saw where it said that I need to take 36 two and three quarter by two and three quarter or 2.75 by 2.75 squares and then 36 of the 2.75 times five inch rectangles. They're all for week two. So that's what I've written, week two. This week is strictly the cutting week, which I adore and love to do only my cutting all at one time before I actually assemble anything. And I think it's great that they have gone and made week one for the cutting. Alrighty, so I am back. Now I marked up my paper to know how many strips to make. I stopped here because I got it all out of the seven strips. I haven't done these yet. I'm gonna need four of those. They are two inch strips. Here's a two inch strip. It says to cut 12 of them. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now, if you notice, all this gray area is pieces of extra fabric, all right? So there's enough fabric here to get these four cuts of two by three and a half inch. So I'm only gonna cut 12 and I'm gonna still end up with extra fabric, all right? That's what I'm gonna do, cut 12 strips 
two inches by the width of the fabric. Okay, so I've got it lined up here at the table, just like before. That's my straight edge, and then I will just cut two inch strips. That's it, 12 two inch strips. Here we go. Go ahead and do that. All right, so if you've looked at your paper, I went ahead and I've already done fabric B. I put fabric, whatever it is, so I don't have to have my cheat sheet when I do my stuff now, when I go to assemble it. But everything is super duper easy because you just take the fabric for fabric B, you cut 40 two and three quarter inch squares. That's week two. Fabric C, five, five and a half, I mean five by five inch squares for week two. Fabric D, you're going to do 96 of them. So it's not like you're subcutting any. You're not going to subcut till you get up here to F. So you subcut those eight. You'll cut eight strips. You'll You'll make eight of them will be four and a, I mean, excuse me, not eight strips. I'm sorry. You'll, on fabric F, you're going to make a four and a half by four and a half. You'll make eight of them. Then you'll make four three and a half by three and a half. And you'll have enough fabric. You're not going to run out of fabric for any of these. Okay? I've just got them all marked up on my paper right here. And, of course, J is our binding. And this is our strips. So those are week four. Putting it together. So... I'm just, just catching you up. So there's not going to be any problem. You can go ahead and just cut all this out. And then um, when we get started, I'm going to tell you about this new book that I just started. I don't even know if you can get it. It has been out of print. I think it came out. It was copyrighted actually in 1978 called The Mirror. And I will give you a little information when I'm done here cutting all this up. And I'll set this out for you. All right. So I'm coming back because I want to let you know that Fabric E, which is... This fabric, if you got the kit, I'm showing it to you here. Okay, that's fabric E. Now it says it needs 12, three and a half by three and a half. All I had to do was literally cut one strip and I got all 12. So this is how much I have left over. I thought I was going to have to cut another strip. So this is quite a bit. I'm just letting you know. And then when you go to fabric F, which is the check. This right here is fabric F right here. I'm working on it. As you can see, it's laying right here. Okay. The first cut eight, four and a half by four and a half inch squares. I got that out of one strip. I cut one strip, four and a half inches wide and managed to get eight out of there. Now I'm going to get four out of the next, but actually I have a piece right here. This is my leftover out of the first strip. So I know that I can get a three and a half inch by three and a half inch cut out of that. So I'll be cutting three out of here and then one here. So that'll give me quite a bit leftover fabric there too. All right. So that just, just giving you some hints here so you don't waste your fabric. And then you've got extra fabric to make something else like a pillow or uh, you can make a Kleenex holder. You could make a pot holder, anything that you want. You can make a multiple thing, even a bow cozy you can make. Because this is cotton fabric. All right, here is all of week two laid out on my design board. And then I have three and four over there. So that is it. I hope you like this video. And let me show you the book I talked about real quick. Let me move that. Okay, so here was the book that I was talking to you about. I don't, I, I guess that's Marley's. Millheiser. Okay, so I just wanted to say that uh, those few things, my dogs are getting all antsy on me and I... I don't even know what time it is. I have been up here since about 7 o'clock this morning. I got up here real early. Oh, it's 11.48. Okay, so I guess they need to take a trip outdoors is what the thing is going on here. So, so I just want to say thank you everybody for watching. And I want to go ahead and I want to also just mention this real quick because my subscribers is over 4,000. Now, I will be doing a subscriber giveaway when... My subscribers reaches 5,000. For all of those that are new and don't know what I do, I normally create a box and then I put a whole bunch of things in it. I'll put, um, usually I try to put 10 inch squares, five inch squares, a jelly roll, maybe even a fat quarter pack or some fat quarters. I'll put some utensils in there, some of the um, things like the rotary cutter, the little ruler that I use and that kind of thing. Uh, sometimes I even give a Starbucks, Panera, and I'm trying um, trying to think what the third gift card is. Usually I'll give a gift card of some sort also in that box as a way to thank everybody that's um, 
joined my YouTube. So, and I have a drawing and everything just like we do for everything else, but I'm just letting you know ahead of time what's going on. But, um, but I, I hope you all that. like this video. I think this is really going to turn out great. And I'm glad that it's not great big because then we're down to four weeks, which makes it in time for St. Patty's Day. If you've got something, you know, if you want to put on the, on the wall or a table runner or whatever you're going to want to do with it. Okay. So I will see you guys next time, which will be next Monday. Okay. See you then. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching everybody.